And the next muscle right underneath your traps is your rhomboid. So your rhomboids, you're gonna have rhomboid major and rhomboid minor. The origin for the minor is from C7 to T1 spinous process, has some attachment to your nuchal ligament too in your cervical region. And your rhomboid major is going to be right below that, so levels T2 through T5 spinous process. And all of these muscle fibers are going to go in an inferior direction slightly and attach to the medial border of your scapula. So the minor will be above the scapular spine, the major will be from the medial border below your scapular spine to the inferior angle of your scapula. The rhomboids are innervated by dorsoscapular nerve as well, so coming from C5. And because of the orientation, its action is to primarily retract the scapula towards the spinal column, downward rotation again, because it's going to point the glenoid downward, and it's going to play a significant role to fix the scapula to the thoracic wall. As we start to go over other muscles in other videos, you're gonna see that the rhomboid major and minor, it works together with the serratus anterior to pin down the scapula to the thoracic wall or your rib cage. So the rhomboid major and minor, the functional application is heavily involved in rowing movements, typically when your elbows are below shoulder height, because then you're gonna have this downward rotation of the scapula and you're gonna have this scapular retraction. A lot of upper extremity pulling and retraction exercises, anything from cable rows to barbell or dumbbell rows, but also anything that you're holding weight in your hand when you're in a hip hinge type of fashion, like deadlifting, beginning parts of powerlifting, cleans. The rhomboids are going to help to create a lot of scapular stability along with your trapezius muscle. To stretch your rhomboids, you're typically going into extreme protraction and slight upward elevation. So you can grab on something that's higher than shoulder height, get your humerus above shoulder height, and then protract your shoulders. Usually grabbing onto something like the side of the cage if you're stretching both sides bilaterally, or grab onto the cage or a band to stretch one side at a time and rotate into your upper arm. Hopefully you can use this information and apply it to your training, your clinical practice or coaching practice. And if you like this video, hit the like button below, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or feedback, drop it in the comments below. And stay tuned for more anatomy videos in the future. Aloha.